but this is how much room this is going to take up. to Death Loves Potluck. We got a harpsichord. Well, <laughs> a kit to put one together anyway. Uh, a real put together harpsichord would be probably more than a car. So we definitely couldn't afford that. I like music, I like classical music, but I don't know anything about it. <laughs> My definition of a harpsichord, if you're not familiar, um, if you ever see anything with like Marie Antoinette, that uh, type of tingy piano sound. <laughs> so the difference is between a piano, uh, which has hammers that strike the chords, a harpsichord has like a little finger that comes up and plucks the chords. Yes. <laughs> um. My opening has a harpsichord in it. It's mainly featured as a harpsichord. So here's the opening. <laughs> My husband is obsessed with harpsichords, always has been, and I often hear about harpsichords and his love of harpsichords. After many years of saving and trying to decide which model to get, um, we ended up with this, which is a double manual Flemish. Do I get points? More or less. <laughs> we went up to Zuckerman's twice up in Connecticut. And the first time, Joseph got to play around with the harps chords. second time we had the wonderful Lawrence show us around and he played us some songs on each and told us a lot about them. Um, <laughs> he and my husband were just in their glory talking back and forth. Uh, my husband, he is a certified history teacher and has his master's degree in military history so he can talk your ear off about it. <laughs> so anyway, the... but... <laughs> After debating, uh, we thought maybe we might want one of these smaller models because our house is not that big. Uh, but in the end, we decided go big or go home because this may be the only one we'll be able to afford in our lifetime. So just in case, we'll get the one we want. And if we are blessed to have enough money to afford more in the future, <laughs> we can go with other models as yes. well. <laughs> So, <laughs> we had the harpsichord delivered yesterday and we let it sit to disperse any germs. Oh, oops. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> so, um, I took a video of the unloading of it and uh, this is how, how long? Eight, ten feet? Um, well, the purchase of the box was seven feet. I think the specs on it said it was like 86 inches total, so... And how heavy? Um, between 150 and 200 pounds. And they sent one guy yeah. to get it into our house. 
just me and one dude. <laughs> so unloading it uh, was not, even though it's marked a fragile musical instrument, uh, it, it didn't go very fragilely. Oh, dude, I know you're going to be more careful than that. We are very concerned that uh, it might be damaged, even though the box is in good shape. Um, this is what glued together. It has no nails. It has no pegs. I, as far as I know from what I've seen, I think they just use glue and they probably, I mean, they probably got joints they cut into it to put it together tighter. Um, but we'll find out. It's, it's a surprise for all of us. There was also a small rock that got stuck under the corner and it gouged a nice big long scratch in my nice refinished hardwood floors that I rented a sander and sanded down and refinished in polyurethane. Multiple layers. It got through multiple layers of polyurethane. Said about that but it's worth it because we have a harpsichord we think Proceed with the opening. Now that I have a sharp object. <laughs> uh, and you can talk about whatever you want, if you want, or you can concentrate on opening it. Just do not cut yourself. You're giving me too many options. <laughs> well, um, I guess first and foremost for our lovely studio audience. I should mention that um, it, uh, there may have been times I've jumped into things before. I can't remember, but I'm sure, but if you have ever seen me before, you've probably noticed that um, something's different and changed and missing. Um, yeah, I got bored and tired of food getting into my mouth when I was eating, so uh, I decided to um, clean everything up. Um, what do you think? Good, bad, ugly, stop talking, cut the bloody box open and show us the really cool, expensive instrument that hopefully is in one piece still. Um, this isn't live, is it? No. <laughs> so we're not gonna have comments popping up on the side. No. <laughs> right, okay, um, so um, I've already, attempted to make the um, general precaution of things where like all the stuff we've been reading saying, um, you know, if you get something in the mail, yes, I am playing with the sharp object. Don't mention the word because YouTube might uh, censor me. <laughs> what, definition of a sharp object? No. Oh. We'll just say germs. Oh, that thing. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> We're worried about germs. This so, is 2020. Uh, that, that, that which has the same name as the um, beer, which is, um, yeah, more after, yeah. Hopefully everything should live on cardboard for about 24 hours. Well, it's been about 26 hours, I think, at this point since it came off of the truck. So also following other things I've seen, people said uh, wipe it down with, um, you know, household cleanser thingies. And while you're all yawning there, I went and tried to clean it up. 
and um, yeah, hopefully I got rid of everything. If not, um, well, it was worth it. You're probably not going to see any more videos for a little while, that's all. <laughs> um, so, without further delay, since I'm already delaying the delay, let's cut this thing open and hope for the best. And let's see if I wind up injuring myself because, oh, we know I will. <laughs> Probably a better way to do this, but um, yeah, something I learned. I thought I just put another scratch on the floor. Um, something I learned a long, 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 long time ago. Being being a person with a degree and all that other fun stuff, um, working in a company with a lot of people who were not as academic in their background, but definitely had a lot of experience with things. Um, oftentimes, the higher the degree the lesser the level of common sense, which is something I often say. So, um, yeah, like my wife said, um, master's degree, and um, I have the common sense of uh, somebody who almost just cut their hand. Um, yeah. We could not afford to go to the hospital. <laughs> well, we have, we have insurance. It's just that we don't know how much longer I'm going to have it job at this peak. Um, and that's why the box is this far away from her. <laughs> this one may not be so bad. This one's not so tight. But I will still find a way to injure myself. Oh, don't worry, everyone. along the bottom should be clean. I did bleach wipe those. Um, just hoping the little box is back. Well, this is a good sign. Yes. <laughs> this makes me honestly feel a little better about this thing kind of dropping and flipping. and Because it looked like it was dropped and flipped. I mean... Well, it probably would have had to have dropped a bit anyway, but, um, behold, my field of styrofoam. Uh, hopefully, this is good. So, um, should I bleach wipe all the styrofoam? <laughs> we don't have enough wipes in the world for that. Sorry. Well, anything inside the box was packed more than 24 hours ago, Ooh, for sure. Yeah, I lost. Actually, well, no, I shouldn't say this is the directions necessarily. This is the blueprints. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Um, How long is this supposed to take to put together? Well, I want to say I read some things on the internet of people suggesting it would be 200 hours. That's if you know what you're doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's for the people who have bought multiple kits in the past who uh, maybe started with clavichords, which are like, um, they tend to be more like squarey looking things that um, like the pianos have the, the arm jack things that pop up and hammer the keys instead of plucking the key. They do hammer the key, right? Yeah, they hammer them with the metal thingy, I believe. Um, they, um, yeah, they're smaller and they have a lot less parts. Usually people say you should start with those or maybe start with a smaller one, but um, yeah, like my wonderful, loving, lovely wife whom I cherish and adore with all my heart because she is the most wonderful, greatest person on the face of the earth, um, we went big or went 
home. I really do like this model too. I, it doesn't have as many keys, so it doesn't play as many notes, but um, I'm not putting anything. I know. Well, here, why don't you, uh, why don't, why don't you uh, let us be there hold the. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, since we didn't have a chance to, like, you know, <laughs> do all this stuff yet. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> How many hours it takes to put together? Oh yes, because my wonderful, lovely, loving whatnot. Um, yeah, um, should be about 200 hours, I think they said. So, um, yeah, I'll be working on this for a while. And all the worse because, unfortunately, thanks to our wonderful... Disaster of 2020. Yeah, what, what's what's the term every single commercial is using these trying times? I'm really May getting... I offer you an egg in these trying times? Yeah, I'm really upset. I, I bought, right before we all kind of went into isolation, um, I bought a whole nice big bag of uh, Reese's peanut butter eggs, and I was like waiting for Easter to be able to like take the eggs out and just like, may I offer you an egg in these trying times? A Reese's peanut butter egg? Um... But yeah, I never got around to that because I'm crazy and I just hoard and store and yeah, those eggs aren't going to get open for six months at least. Anyway, um, so let's continue the styrofoam. Wow, that's a lot of styrofoam. I'm going to need a bag, aren't I? Um, you're going to need a dumpster. <laughs> Ooh. Well, this bugs me a little, but may not be bad. There is a thingy that's in a bad spot. I don't know if it's purposely supposed to be packed that way or what. Yes, I'm taking forever doing this. It's what I do. I don't do things quickly. I'm one of those people who methodically has to go slowly calculating, doing all the stuff in a very slow um, trepidation. Uh, this is a, uh, these are fun. I've never seen these before. It's an Easter egg. May we offer you a packing egg in these trucking times? Oh, the camera's crooked. Huh? What? <laughs> it said the, the camera is crooked. I thought you purposely did that. It's been like that for a bit. When you adjusted it last time, you adjusted it to that one. I thought that this was... No, it's, it's, it's crooked. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. So crooked, but I don't know if that's what you wanted. I'm trying to do somewhat level. Mm. It'll do. We would like to apologize for any inconvenience and motion sickness that any of this may have caused you in the, in the, the current timing. Um, side effects may include nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset, puking, um, possibly death. But death loves potlucks, so ah. we're all good. Um, which of these do you want me to put in here? And I'll just tiny, tiny things. Okay. I will reuse them for further shipping eventually. Do you want to plug anything? Hmm? Since you just mentioned shipping, do you want to plug anything? Oh, uh, no, not at this time because I can't order anything from my wholesalers because of these trying times. Squirrel? Probably squirrel. Uh, I was going to say, do we have a visitor? <laughs> Go home. <laughs> Go home now. No, no visitor. Must be a squirrel. Okay. You're not here <laughs> as much as I am. <laughs> Squirrels are rampant. <laughs> yes, I'm picking up each one individually. It's what I do. The job is still getting done. 
This might be a good time for editing. <laughs> that is what the fast forward button is for. Prepare to fast forward. Fast forwarding, sir. Fast forward. Oh, wow. I wonder if this must be the legs. So this is the only thing I'm worried about right now, is this one. Just because that one's kind of sticking out and up and over the thingies. Hmm. I mean, maybe it's supposed to be like that. It looks which like is... they purposely padded well underneath of it to get it to stay in that position. Well, because I mean, I would think it would be like turned like that and this would be Maybe they did this so that it wouldn't bump into anything that way. But well, that's the case, that makes sense. All right, so let's... That's interesting. Um... It's the lid. Okay. So I guess the bottom's not in it yet. Hmm. Oh, no, the bottom's in it. The bottom's there. So that's... I think it's okay. By the way, nobody make fun of me bending over and my shirt coming up or something. It's not my fault. Or the hole in my pants. These are my work clothes. <laughs> no, really. I think... I, I work in the dungeon in the basement these days because our company has us working from home right now. So it's it's cold. So I'm generally wearing like three layers of clothing and I, I, I'd rather wear pants than jeans. So I'm just, but if I'm going to be in the basement and working, I'll just wear the pants that have the, yeah, I know. I'm just, <laughs> I feel comfortable talking about what I wear. <laughs> I'm proud of it. So yeah, there, there's a hole in my pants, and uh, I'm gonna be bending over, and you know, just go ahead and make fun of me. You're fine. <laughs> I don't care. I am comfortable with myself, and that is an extreme lie. But I'm comfortable with that too. This is the thing. I don't know. Is the base attached to it or not? Uh, because this is here it's like I wish I was strong enough to actually lift this up a little bit just to see what's attached on the bottom but I'm scared to death and not stupid so um, yeah but um, good to know this is how long it is it starts from here and goes all the way to here. <laughs> Do you want me to take pictures with your phone? Uh, probably should, because I doubt you won't be able to really move the camera because you don't want to move it, do you? Well, I can move it. Let's pause for a minute. We're back. Okay. All right. So behold, what is in the box? There's still some stuff in there because I think for the time being, it's better off that we just leave it there to keep anything from going. But take a look at this baby. Well, you, you can. Yeah, I know. You can fit so many handle and, and uh, you can fit so many. Uh, just look at all the handle and uh, uh, come on. What else are some 17th century um, 
What's what's your oh, handles more eighteen? Uh, handles obviously eighteen. No, it's starts just with an S. Huh? Sc Sc Scarlatti. Uh, well, Scarlatti is right around in between thing too. But well, this thing will definitely be playing some Scarlatti thingies on it because there's five hundred and fifty-five harpsichord concertos that Scarlatti wrote. I think it's five hundred. <laughs> and bonus, it's big enough to bury him in. Yes. When I go, <laughs> I've already said this to her. If this thing isn't com actually no, if this thing is completed. Bury me in this thing because actually it'll be cheaper than a coffin. Um, but um, yeah, um, this is going to be fun. Um, so now that I've ruined my joke, I'll go back to saying this is this and this is this. And I really don't know what this is, but this is this is this. The keys. I actually thought I was going to have to cut these more than uh, they're already set up, which is really great when I was looking at things online about uh, people cutting these I was so we we did upgrade right we upgraded to the boxwood yes. keys with uh what type of wood are the uh i want to say rose or cherry I for the what do you wrong. call those um well these are the uh naturals mm -hmm. the big ones and the small ones are sharps so like if you were looking at a, a normal keyboard on a normal piano um of course these would be white, the naturals, and the sharps would be black. Um, I've seen, well, there's some that I've seen where normally, bleh, I'm over myself on this, um, backtracking. A lot of times on harpsichords you see that they have reversed keyboards. So the naturals will be in black and the sharps will be in, in white, usually capped with bone, I think. Um, that was the standard for this model kit. But um, well, we decided to go with something a little bit different. And uh, I, I like the look of the Italian harpsichords that they had too, which is, um, when I say it's an older model, I mean that in the sense that Italian style harpsichords were more in vogue uh, before the Flemish models. So like maybe more along the lines of the 1500s, you probably saw more of the Italian models and then more like in the 16 later uh, mid to later 1600s like 16 1640 I guess through maybe 17 well I mean they went on to the 1700s but like 1640s up until the end of the 17th century which is the 1600s which is the fun part about explaining history to people like I said, history teacher, he will talk your ears off. So in short, we have light wood for your normal keys and dark wood for the those little shorter keys that are usually black. Hmm. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> that's what she said. No, really, that's what she said, because that made more <laughs> sense and was a lot easier. Yeah. Ooh, look. It's a box. Probably watching this now and saying, No, don't remove the box. The box is holding everything together. Most of us are saying, Where's the box cutter? <laughs> well, it's sticking out of the back of my hand, of course. Uh oh. It's <laughs> not. Oh, it's with bleach wipes. But they should be so that when I cut myself, I can burn myself with bleach. Huzzah! Murphy and C Black. No, don't give him the peanut. He's allergic. Bizarro. Bizarro. No, don't remove the box. Ooh, stop. No, you can't see this. <laughs> what is stuff? I'm not entirely That's a sure. Lot of stuff. It, oh, um, this is probably this is the small stuff. So this is probably um uh, the felt that goes in the keyboard, you have to actually put felt, I believe, in the keys, uh, in the keyboards. It's to help keep them from making lots of noise when the, uh, I will say this, I, of the different harpsichords I've gotten to play around with, um, we, I said, we went to Zuckerman, we got to play around with the keyboards there. We also got to go to Harpsichord Clearinghouse and try out some 
harpsichords there, um, ones that all sorts of people had put together and um, were, uh, and they had given them back to them to be sold as consignment. Um, so, I mean, they get a good going over, uh, but you see a lot of uh, older instruments too that, you know, um, the character on them is an older style of setup for it that not necessarily so perfect at the moment, but they can sometimes make a lot more noise uh, if they don't have all the stuff on it, right? Um, yeah. But when it's an older vintage piece, obviously you want to keep it as close to that as possible, so I can fully understand that. Uh, what else is in here? this I'm gonna be able to get a good close-up of this I don't know how well it's gonna look but there's like 50,000 little pins that are in here I don't know how well you can see them does mm. it look fairly clear no it just looks like a big brown blob mm. I want to open it but I'm not stupid how about that uh, yeah kind of okay well um, yeah, imagine this is an entire bag full of these. Those are eventually going to have to get put in um, somewhere around here. And um, that's what each one of the strings uh, has to connect to. And like when you have to tune this thing relatively, relatively often, um, yeah, I gotta like tune each one individually. And there's 56 maybe 50, 56, this is 56 plus one, I think. So I'll say 57, but I think it's really 56. 56 keys, 56 notes, um, that's 56 pins. So yeah, 56 times three, because for a harpsichord like this, you've got what's called the eight foot strings, which are the long strings that go all the way across it. And that's like your normal notes. And then you get a second set of eight foot strings, which makes the sound sound just, just a tiny bit different. And sometimes you'll, that's one of the things like, you notice it too with the two sets of keyboards, um, like this one's gonna have. Um, one set will be, it, it plucks the same, it plucks the string in a different spot. So that's what makes the, that's why it's not locked. Well, we have a visitor, it's a ghost. Welcome to our wonderful, lovely home. Um, Am I going to clean the lock? Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so the strings all go to that. So there's two sets because of the jacks that go to that. So, um, yeah. And then there's what's called the four foot strings. So you have two sets of eight foot strings and one set of four foot strings. And the eight foot strings are like, um, like I said, it sounds one way and then it plucks at a different spot, so it sounds ever so slightly different. And then you have the four foot strings, which is like almost an octave higher, and they're super tension tight. Um, in other words, what it all boils down to, to make a long story short, too, too late. late. Um, that's a lot of pins that are gonna have to get tuned a lot. So that's what that is. So, uh, and uh. I think I'm going to have to put this back on the stand because my hands are getting shaky. Oh, okay. All right, just one minute. There's probably like an instruction book thing that says, now, if you look on the left side of your box, these pieces will be in here. <laughs> They're not on the left side anymore. Oh, this is the felt for the dampers. Specifically marked. Ooh, there's the hammer because everything can be fixed with a hammer. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, you don't have anything, okay. So, um, this thingy, I really wanna open it, but because like I said, I like with the chocolate eggs, I, they're gonna sit there for six months because I just don't wanna open them even though they're there. Um, it, it's like, people with like plastic on their couches. It, the plastic's gonna stay there. Um, you can take the plastic off, but um, 
Yeah, Marie's never going to take the plastic off. Um, <laughs> well, she did in that one episode, and everyone thought it was weird. But um, Well, I undo the tape, but the tape will never go back on. about my wife and the rest of the, um, what, what do you refer to your fans as? Hi. What fans? Lunch, <laughs> followers, whatever. Lunch and um, combustibles are not an option. Uh, deathies. Um, dudes. <laughs> since you had that song stuck in your head. Okay, okay. So this morning, I, I randomly, I I got up and, and suddenly I had a song stuck in my head and I told him I have a song stuck in my head and he's like, well, yeah, I always have a song stuck in my head too. What's your song? And I said, it's, I'm a dude, she's a dude. <laughs> I forget the rest of it. 90s kids. <laughs> I'm a dude, she's a dude, come on everybody because we're all dudes. I'm not the musically inclined one. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying it's a scary song. <laughs> All right, so that's randomness. <laughs> oh, by, by the way, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love each and every one of the people who have subscribed to me. I, I really do. I think I have like 20 now. And I am very thankful for each and every one of you. So hit the like or subscribe button. Or I will find you with this tuning hammer. <laughs> There's really not much I can do with it. I'll just probably like stand there and say, Hi, uh, the power of the tuning hammer compels you. Tune my harpsichord. You will be busy for a while. Um, no, uh, that's okay. So anyway, um, this is the tuning hammer. Uh, this is the thing where you... Um, you use it to tune the pins with, and also when you're stringing the harpsichord, when you have to put the strings in, um, you have to like make all these lots and lots of double helix twists on them um, and get them just right so that they don't break under the tension. And they, they have to be like not too tight because they will break. They have to be not too loose because they'll come undone. Um, this is a wonderful little thing that helps out a lot because you like take the string and you put it on a table with something heavy on it and you unroll the string to the right length and you attach it through the little hook that's on here and it's wonderful because you can just do this and it twists up the double helix for you you can get all the other piece out to the side of the string because the string goes through here and it kind of bends out and then, and then you let go of it and oh, you twist it back up and roll it the rest of the way and it makes it a stronger thingy because I try to watch those videos that say a good way to do stuff Hopefully, I shouldn't say hopefully, it's the right way, but we'll figure that out when we get to that bridge. Um, but uh, that's the tuning hammer, that's like super important. So, yay! And now everything's going to fall out of the bag because it's, um, yeah. Are you looking at the pieces? Poor, beautifully, nicely packed box. How I have made a mess of it. Oh. Um. I'm gonna start putting things on the floor. That's okay. I mopped before I came. Well, I'm more at least that half of the room. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also going to take a break for a moment and wash my hands. Oh. I think the um, tuning hammer had a lot of uh, oil stuff on it. Okay. My hands are, yeah. Be right back. My pocket is definitely at home. <laughs> You're already recording, aren't you? Then <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Um, 
Yeah, okay. If anybody was wondering um, while I'm walking back and forth, if, I, I, I'm not ha it's not that I'm not happy to see everyone, but yeah, there, there's a phone in my pocket. So if you notice there was something like sticking funny. It's, it's, it's my phone or it's my car keys, which um, are awesome because of this keychain. And now I'm going to waste your time talking about this keychain instead of the harpsichord. This keychain I have had since I was nine years old. So I've had this since probably 1989. As you can tell, it is not Zelda. <laughs> it would be Link from Zelda. But of course, if you're watching this video, you're probably smart enough to know that already. So I have had this keychain on my car keys since the day I started driving when I turned 18, yeah, seven, wait, crap, did we start driving here at 17 or 18? 17 and a half, I think. I think you hit your permit at 16. And... But we didn't because oh, I was before yeah. you. Um, so yeah, I want to say like 17 and a half because it, well, it was my senior year. So I had to have been 17 something. Um, You're giving away your age, by the way. I didn't say when my senior year was. <laughs> Wait, so and how many people from here are in New Jersey? <laughs> That's okay. They know I'm from New Jersey. Okay. There's no way around that. Okay. Once I open my shop and start shipping things, we'll see it's from New Jersey anyway. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so the keychain. Um, yeah, I've had the thing since like 1989. I got it at, yeah, this will really tell my age. Well, 1989, 1990. Captron uh, in our local mall. Um, it's an officially licensed Nintendo Zelda keychain. Obviously, it has a Nintendo copyright on it, etc. It has been on every set of car keys I've had. I waited until I was old enough to drive to put it on car key, to put it on car, to put it on keys in general because that's what I wanted it for. Um, and Link is left-handed, which makes me even happier because being a left-handed person, um, screw you, right-handed people. I mean, uh, right-handed people are wonderful. We, I love right-handed people. Say hi, hello, right-handed. Shake hands, right-handed. Um, yeah, left brain, right-handed. Yeah. Yeah, um, but um, I thought it was just neat because there's so few left-handed looking things, I thought. Um, so that was nice. Um, yeah, so I got my cool keychain. So those are the things that are in my pocket right now. Um, <laughs> anyway, back to the harpsichord. And now back to my harpsichord here on Death Loves Pop Pop. I mean, there's other stuff that's in here. I just don't know, like, how much of it is really, like, ooh, everyone wants to see this. I mean, there's stuff, but... There's, like, planks of wood that have stuff cut in them, um, which I don't know what they are yet. I will eventually be finding out. And I will also say, this is very rare, because usually he would read instructions front and back before even looking at any of this stuff. So the fact that he's even going through the box. But that's really just to check. Well, one, he's super excited. It's a kid on Christmas Day, but it's also to check to make sure oh, nothing's yeah. broken. I knew I forgot to do something. What? Check to see if anything was broken. <laughs> see, he got caught up in it. <laughs> But whereas I will just figure out how to put something together, he actually reads the instructions all the time, front to back. That's how I was taught. I toss them to the side and just do it. <laughs> what are you doing, dear? Honestly, I don't know. Really, I don't. I'm just looking around to see if I can notice anything that looks like a crack. I mean, like at any of the joints or anything on it, because I, I really don't know either. It's okay, because Zippy is still guarding your instructions over there. All is well. This is true. I wonder if we should rename him. Zippy is what he's called in the catalog, I think. Uh, by the way, that Zippy there, he he is a mailbox mascot 
the mailbox will sit on top of his head. You can see the post goes through the top there. And um, we, we haven't set him up yet because uh, mailboxes in our area are on the porch and we have to refinish our porch because it is rotted. So once we replace the porch floor, Don't we will- Don't let them in on the secret about the porch. We want visit. It's like the burbs. They don't isolate. <laughs> it's like the burbs where if you step in the wrong spot on the porch, a bunch of bees are gonna come out and your foot's gonna fall through it. And yeah. <laughs> All right. I back in position. <laughs> yes, it's so. Okay. Oh. Now the fun thing is, we're actually going to have to carry all of this stuff upstairs to the guest room in order to start assembling it. Uh, the music room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the guest slash music room. <laughs> I'm surprised this didn't break. That's a very thin piece of wood connecting there. Which is not to say that's a bad thing. I mean, it's it's supposed to probably be that thin. It's just crap with the with the fact that it kind of fell and flipped. I would have kind of expected something like that would crack. Now oh. the problem is you can't get to the soundboard to check the soundboard. That's on the bottom, isn't it? Probably. And that's the most delicate piece. Well, it depends how thick it's cut in the first place. I mean, because I mean, I remembered reading it was going to have to be planed, and um, so I don't know how thick the soundboard is in the first place. So down here at the bottom is the come on, brain. It's got to be the lid, but. Uh, Well, we've hidden a soundboard somewhere in this picture. Soundboard, will you stand up, please? That was not actually a mystery. That was crap. That wasn't actually a. Monty Python quote that way because I was thinking of Mystery Science Theater. Mitchell, will you stand up, please? All right, well. I can tell you there's stuff, but I can't get to it. Okay, remember what I said about the um, leaving some of this stuff in here? I don't think I need to leave any of it in here anymore. Oh. Mm. Yes, I speak in quotes of things. That's how I was raised in college. Quote three musketeers and LA Confidential. Uh, and Skippy constantly going, I got a lot of fingers and a lot of pies. Oh, just bored. I'm reading the labels backward through the bag, just wondering what it was. It's just packing stuff. But... No! No! You 
already moved these pieces. Why do you have to go back and move them again over there? Because I feel like it, because I'm slow and methodical, that's how I do things. But it doesn't get anything done. Yes, I know that. But it's my way. Ah, so those are the legs? Mm -hmm. So hear me about the legs. Here we have what's going to possibly be replacing them. <laughs> now this is something you can beat someone over the head with and it's gonna hurt. This is also something you can beat someone over the head with and it's, oh, you can't really see him. Anyway, I would like to thank everyone for supplying me with these lovely things that, oh crap, no, I can't say that on camera, can I? Uh, poop. What are you trying to say? Nothing, absolutely nothing. <laughs> I am not going to do anything with these other than attaching them to the uh, instrument because that's, yeah. So, <laughs> so when we were thinking of getting the harp support, um, when we're talking about the stand, um, these are the legs that come with it. However, my parents were on one of their wholesale runs and they went to a salvage yard and they found these, which are the lion foot. And they have this wonderful design. But we have five of these. And I think we need six legs. Well, the other problem is trying to figure out. There are four what. here. I think there's more than four. Yeah, if there's only four, that would be great. We could use them. We so, could still use the five anyway. They just have to be spaced right. We weren't really settled on what design we're going to do the box cord in. And I think that we settled on a Celtic theme, which is not something you see very often in a harpsichord. So I don't see period. So uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if these will actually fit in with what we end up doing ah. or not. <laughs> we also um, there is a uh, circular piece that goes in the soundboard called a rose. And we were trying to find a tree of life rose, and uh, they don't exist because Celtic is not something that people really do in harpsichords. So uh, we're trying to figure that out. We want to see if maybe we can get someone with a 3D printer to print us something, or I don't know. Or like the wood thing that we used to have. We're still figuring out. We're lots of problems for my stepfather. That would have been nice and ideal too. Oh yes, back uh, they came out with <laughs> what was a very good idea. It's like a printer that carves things out of wood, except uh, his stepfather got two of them and neither of them really worked. So it was a good idea in theory. So we're either going to go with the legs that came with it or <laughs> the super fancy legs, which is more my aesthetic. Okay, I'll let you get back to it. <laughs> Bladed shark, do 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 do. Bladed shark. Hey, 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 hey! Copyright. <laughs> Everybody else uses it. <laughs> I don't know what the rules are anymore. If it has to be thirty seconds or less, or what? So I, I, I'd rather safe than sorry. Yeah, fine. <laughs> Considering how many other things I've quoted on here. Yeah, but well, those are reference, it's not quoted. Yeah. Oh crap! That's even worse, isn't it? I think that'll be fine. They, they actually have an algorithm that picks up on music. Really? Yes. Because one of my videos in the beginning got spiked because of the version of the uh, opening song that I used. There's a Bach the harpsichord concerto. Yes, and I gave the artist credit, but they still flagged me, and yeah. So I took it down and I changed the opening song. The different version, which 
I got all of them off a site that said they were free use copyright, but I guess they lied to me. Oh, lid hinges. I thought it said lid thingies. <laughs> yes, the all-important lid thingies. Everyone needs lid thingies. Absolutely. And metal thingies. Oh, I know what these are. These are the, um, this changes the registers. Remember the uh, switches? Uh, yes, that, that slidey thing. Mm -hmm. That's a technical term, slidey thing. Oh, so what is that uh, book that you bought that you religiously carried oh, around with yes. you for months? That that would be the... Um... Oh, am I still... Okay, we're still... We're... It's Sorry. still recording. <laughs> um, I believe it's called the Complete Harpsichord Owner's Guide or the, Harp, no, the Harpsichord Owner's Manual. Uh, by uh, Edward Kotick. Um, he's a guy who's worked with harpsichords for a long, long, long time. Uh, he used to work with Zuckerman um, and a lot of different sites I was reading said, um, you're going to own a harpsichord, you're going to build a harpsichord, get that book because there's a lot of information in it. And there really is historic stuff about like different things about harpsichords in history even things about, you know, what kind of harpsichord you want to get when you're trying to figure out what kind you want to look for, which, while I can't make decisions worth crap, <laughs> excuse me, um, but, um, yeah, it, it, uh, for a normal person, it would help a lot. Like, are you looking for this type of sound, and are you planning on playing this type of music? Well, this is the sort of thing you want to look for. Do you want to have to worry about doing this when you're putting it together? or do you want to have this done instead? Then maybe you want to look at a kit versus a finished instrument or an instrument that's been, a kit instrument that's completed up to a certain point. Um, it tells you things about how like, um, if you spill coffee in your harpsichord, because I guess apparently people spill coffee in their harpsichord, um, you want to basically just, you know, it's done, it's over with, rip the strings out. You're not gonna clean it up unless you rip the strings out. You're gonna have to replace the strings. Um, that's what you're gonna need to do. As opposed to, you can try and take the strings apart and everything should be fine. Uh, considering what you have to go through to try and get them wrapped up and on those pins and everything else, I think he probably is better, his idea is probably better off just rip the bloody things out and just get new strings. Uh, I don't remember how much the strings are. Um, but yeah. Um, oh, also um, important um, technical note, harpsichord strings are not the same as piano strings. Um, and unlike a piano, you can tune your own harpsichord, hence the little hammer thingy. Um, so you don't have to actually find someone to tune it for you. You just need like a tuner and um, the hammer thingy um, or a socket thingy that kind of will fit on the pins. Um, Anyway, no. I'm going back to digging in my box. <laughs> okay, I can't see this one. <laughs> what? You gonna edit this out? Maybe. You may have to. This says lead wire. First thing I popped up was that it's lead wife. <laughs> Here, oh did you order a lewd wife? <laughs> Only in Japan. <laughs> Ow, that was metal. Oh, these are the um the fucky thingies. <laughs> the the down and uh, not continue to scratch my fingers up with them. Um, and this is the bag of the little thingies that are attached to the jacks. When they pop up, they pluck the strings. I have to cut all of these. Individually. Individually. By hand. Ooh, and here... is the strings. 
all of them. I think it's all of them. Um, these lovely coils of, oh, that's the brass wire they give you. That's, or the gold wire. Um, well, Actually, it's... it looks like silver, gold, and brass. You are correct. I only saw the one side. So, um... Are they different tensions, or...? Probably. Well, they, I remembered reading, like, um, the different wires can produce a little bit different in the sounds. I think Lawrence was saying some things about that, too. Um, but, I mean, you know. Anyway, so these are the wires. Uh, figure out how that works, eventually. This video is going to be three hours long, and I'm going to cut none of it. <laughs> well. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and we get wood glue. <laughs> well, we need the wood glue, because that's... Disabled up back. There's something in it, but I think it's an extra jack. These are the jacks. Ooh, ah. Plastic, because we live in the modern world, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the old ones originally were wood, but the plastic ones are easier to make, um, they're cheaper. Um, th there's some that can say that, uh, like Lawrence was telling us, after a while um, they can sometimes bend over time because of like heat and things like that. But likewise with wood, you can have moisture messing with them and they can swell up and shrink just like, and that's going to be a nightmare, which is why we have a humidity gauge thingy and we're going to need to get a humidifier as well um, but we kind of knew that was going to happen so that's you know we already know that um, but these are the jacks and um, the keys when they'll if the keys are here and they've got a long piece that comes on them and you press down the key and the key pops up and pops the jacks up and then they pop the strings and blah 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 everything we've already told you five or six times um, but come on it's my harpsichord I get to show off well, I think you should have put a tree up. You should have put some of the, the holiday decorations. <laughs> yes, it is your Christmas, I know. <laughs> I don't know if we should say Christmas or not. Yes, that's fine. Oh, good. <laughs> so, we've got stuff. That's what we should have done. We should have put Christmas music on in the background. Happy right. Christmas harpsichord music? <laughs> also probably copyright. Am I allowed to say damn it angrily? Sure. Damn it! <laughs> oh, did I show them these things? I mean, I, we talked about them, but... These metal things, um, they go into the it's neat because with this and the models they make now, I think they do this with all of them that have the separate things. Like I was trying to explain those eight foot strings and four foot strings and all that stuff, how it changes the sounds a little bit. Um, these are the little levers that change the jacks to pluck the strings at the different parts. So you'd be sitting here playing, and this I think was even the case back in like the old days, and you'd be playing and then, up, oh, I wanna change it so that when I press the keys, um, like if you set it for one to eight foot, um, you'll probably have just, because this is what they call a double manual, meaning the manual means a keyboard, which is something we should have said in the beginning. Um, so for this case, because it's a double manual, notice I used non-finger quotes, but hand quotes, um, that means it has two keyboards. So we got a keyboard on top and a keyboard on bottom. You can play both keyboards. You have one hand playing one keyboard and the other hand playing the other keyboard. You'll get like how I interpret it, a stronger sound from the bottom one and a lighter, more tinkly sound from the upper one. And then you can combine the two so that you'll have two eights playing. And when that happens, you'd move this little switch in a direction. And uh, well, 
in the old days, you'd have the switches over here, you'd pull one out, push one in, etc. cetera. Um, but the double manual ones, and I think Zuckerman does this with all of theirs now, from what I think I've seen in some, model, uh, some models I've seen on the internet, um, they put the switches in here, in the middle, so that you don't have to reach all the way around to the side every time you want to change something. So you can have the one keyboard playing on the bottom, and then you can play the top keyboard for the slightly different sound, or you can move the lever and it sets the jacks up so that you could be playing the bottom keyboard and it's playing both keyboards now. And you'll actually see, you'll press the keys on the bottom and you'll see the keys on the top actually dropping like someone was pressing them as well, because it's now bucking the strings at both points as if you were playing both keyboards. Um, and all this you learned just because I wanted to tell you about these metal thingies. Where was I? <laughs> you were digging in the box. <laughs> box. I can't get this back in the box. definitely strapped a lot of this down pretty good. Most of the stuff is taped. Good, so after that unloading. <laughs> Bad thing is I'm getting really lightheaded right now. <laughs> I'm all the leaning over. This is the most exercise I've probably had in a month because um, work basically keeps me sitting, well, more than a month because I've been doing this pretty much for almost two years now. Work pretty much keeps me sitting in front of a computer um, forever. Um, I'm just that busy. So it's like, hey, I got a break. I can get up and do a quick little walk around, and then I've got 50,000 fires to put out again, and yeah. Hey, I've got lunch, but, um, you know, what am I going to do? Walk around and stand while I'm eating lunch? I mean, I can do that, and I have done that sometimes, but I'm right back to sitting, so I'm sitting pretty much almost a full eight hours a day. Oh, I should have done that. Stop cutting everything apart. You'll never get it back together. Well, we gotta take it all off to put it upstairs anyway. Well, I, I didn't think necessarily we were gonna do that right now. Well, no, not right now. We need, we need more hands to carry that up. Mm. Although it would be neat to see exactly how much room it's going to take up in that room. Well, oh, yeah. Okay, I don't know what these are, these planks, but these the thingies on the soundboard? Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm thinking of this right. I believe... Actually, I thought I got to cut those. Yeah. I believe these are the guides that the jacks drop into. It's like the jacks would slip into these holes in here. And... Uh, Yes, yeah, so that kind of gives you an idea. <coughs> <coughs> There's a lot of little part pieces. <coughs> but, um, oh, no, wait. Um, this is what moves when you move the levers to um, change where the uh, strings are getting plucked oh, out. Okay. And 
there's another nice thing about these type of these types of things. Um, they can play at different uh, pitches because musicians love pitches. I am so dumb. Um, by the way I saw it, I believe on these, you got the keyboard sitting there on the bottom and it has little spacer things on the side. And you can pull the spacer out on the one side and push the keyboard over and put the spacer back over here so it doesn't keep moving. And that will actually change the pitch of the sound. So like you're playing a note and the note sounds like um, ding, and then you move it over and now it sounds like ding. So it's like a little bit flatter. Um, back in the old days, they played at a different pitch than apparently what most musicians play at these days. So uh, I think they call them temperaments. So there's like, uh, I don't remember the names of the temperaments, but they're mostly French, I think. So yeah, are we at time? Let me uh, stop and start again, just so we don't run out. We'll be right back. Okay. I just made threat from now. No, I'm direct object. I don't know. Anyway. use this one. Depends on whether or not I go with that one in the end. Uh, uh, by that one he means uh, oh, yeah, when we moved into the house over the doorway there they had a music stand up there and we've kept it because it's a nice little touch and uh, we're actually quite fond of the previous owners. They're oh yeah. Very nice people. They, Although they've passed away since. but The house was a bit rough when we got it. Um, okay, it was more than a bit rough, but um, there were a lot of things about this house, how they were, that I mean, you know, it, it was nice. We, they, they did what they did, and it was very nice what they did and what they kept of it. Um, things that they left us that really did go well with things, like our lovely dining room table. Um, you know, it's, I have no, nothing to say about uh, that, about anything with them. And they were very nice with when we were going through things with the sale too. They were very helpful, accommodating about things. Um, and it, ooh, ironically, I can't lift it. I was just gonna say I found those little spacer things I was talking about for the keyboard, uh, for the um, the temperaments. I just don't think I can lift it. Those are the um, planks for the pins. Uh, the planks for the pins go in. I think they drilled the holes for them already. Or no, no, they're not. I know what those are. That's that goes under the keyboard for the jacks. That's where the um, the keys get attached. Okay. Um. Hmm. I guess that's it. <laughs> I just want to try and lift some other stuff up to try and show them. <laughs> Everything else, I don't really know what it does. No, but that could be dangerous. <laughs> that could be very dangerous. Okay, the only thing I don't know is, I don't know what the soundboard is. It's got to be under, under the lid kind of thing. Because I can see... I can see the lid. Oh no, I can see the bottom. 
which is not attached. So then there's the question of where's the soundboard and where is the lid? This is two layers of something. Yes, there's a layer of something underneath of this belt. If you poke your fingers under, it's a belt there. Okay. This is good. One, two, and the case. Okay, so there are three things under here. The only problem is we can't take a look at them. Well, hopefully they're not broken. Now, you know what certain people are gonna say? Why couldn't you just lift it up anyway? There's two of you, you could have picked it up. Because we you. are weak. 150 to 200 pounds. <laughs> well, it's not even fully assembled, but still. Honestly, I don't know where I should pick it up from. Ah, knock on wood. <laughs> it's real. Oh, I see screws. I guess there has to be some screws in some things. Well, I remember reading one of the things that's big with the harpsichords is that they generally, everything is attached for the most part by just glue because that keeps it lighter. And, um, well, yeah, it keeps it lighter. Um, Okay, so that is part one of uh, our harpsichord series, and like I said, or he said, it takes about uh, 200 hours for an experienced person to play it together, so this is going to be a very long series, <laughs> as you can tell, because I'm sure this video is three hours long. You're welcome. <laughs> and you. You. Yeah, you're welcome, too. Um, enjoy your history lesson. Um, does this mean this is the end for now? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, go forth, have fun. This is what I used to say when I did my classes. Um, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Um, and I'd say it just like that too. But yeah. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, stay isolated for the most part. Um, yes, of course, go buy groceries if you have to. Um, good luck. <laughs> Once again, thank you for watching. This is Death Loves Potluck. <laughs> now I feel all self-conscious. <laughs> That's all the beginning of these videos are, is me just fixing stuff. <laughs> Safety last. Ow. <laughs> I kind of like want to like fill that box full of like plastic balls and have a ball pit. Joseph. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to our happy... Wow, look at my glasses. Are... <laughs> that is weird looking at the light. Yes, that's well, the went... room. Hazards there... of the light room. <laughs> mm. There went my Alfred Hitchcock thing I was going to do, but... <laughs> it's been a Monty Python like thing. Where I start talking on and on, and you come riding out like the night guy, and you're like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> But I have no swords here. <laughs>